is the cessation of all suffering. What is the cessation of all suffering? Our real nature. If only we would know ourselves as, as we truly are. So in Indian philosophy, um, when we discuss suffering, um, one way is to talk about the three kinds of suffering, one classification. Adhyatmika, which refers to the body-mind, suffering which comes from one's own body-mind, illness, physical, um, depression, unhappiness, mental, this is suffering from one's own body-mind. This is Adhyatmika Dukkha, it's one kind of suffering. The second kind of suffering is Adhibhautika, suffering which comes from other living beings. Um, in classical texts, they'll talk about the suffering caused by the mosquito and the tiger. Uh, so neither mosquitoes and tigers here, but um, suffering caused by other beings. You know, uh, maybe this annoying person who happened to, who is your neighbor, or maybe your boss in the office, or somebody, somebody who causes you suffering. The suffering caused by other living beings, human beings, and other beings. And finally, Adi Daivi Kadukha, the suffering caused by natural fa factors hurricanes and earthquakes and um, too much cold or too much heat or whatever. Three kinds of suffering, natural suffering, um, suffering from other living beings and our own internal body-mind suffering. Of course, you may say that isn't it true whether it's suffering caused by nature or suffering caused by other people, ultimately it has to come to my body and mind. It has to affect me physically too or mentally to make me suffer. That's true. That's true. Ultimately, suffering is at the level of the body and mind. In fact, ultimately at the level of the mind. It's only when the mind recognizes suffering, I say, I am in pain. But just for the sake of classification, three kinds of suffering. And it says, Sarva Dukkha Naam, all suffering comes to an end. When we realize that we are this fourth, we are this pure consciousness. But this has to be understood carefully. Uh, all suffering comes to an end, so I have got, I am prone to headaches, so let, will my headaches be cured when I am enlightened? Um, I am very poor, so will my poverty will be, all my debts will be paid off, my credit card debts and all, um, when I am enlightened? Or um, there are certain things which I want in life, you know, money and fame and success, and I am unhappy because I don't get them, so when I am enlightened, will all those problems be taken care of? No. I'm sorry to disturb all of, some of you looked expectant, maybe, <laughs> maybe, no. The Buddha put it very beautifully. He said the nature of suffering, what is the nature of suffering? He said, it's like a man hit by an arrow. Imagine the burning and the stinging sensation, you're hit by an arrow and immediately afterwards hit by another arrow. So imagine the suffering, two arrows. What is the first arrow? The first arrow is what the world throws at you. Whatever happens in the world and what happens to you in the world, in your community, in your personal relationships, in your health, um, whatever is happening in the world, that's the first arrow. The second arrow is much worse. It's our reaction to it all. That is the real suffering. That's the real suffering. The real suffering is how we react. And the Buddha says what he is going to teach, that means the whole teaching of Buddhism, that will remove the suffering caused by the second arrow. Not the first one. Very gentleman like he says, I cannot do anything about the first arrow. That comes by our karma. And for that, there are worldly remedies. Ill health, you can practice Hatha Yoga. You, uh, if you have um, money problems, you can borrow. No, don't borrow. <laughs> That's a very New York solution too. <laughs> um, so there are worldly solutions for, uh, for all our worldly problems for the first arrow. And none of them work. That's the thing. None of them really work. If they really worked, if I have ill health and there is some sure, short solution, then I should be cured of ill health forever. Not at all. Nobody ever has been. If, there, if I'm hungry and if I eat, has hunger gone forever? Of course not. Afternoon, brunch, then dinner, then next morning. So it doesn't go away. There is no uh, final solution for uh, suffering in the world, the first arrow. And there is no absolutely guaranteed solution. There is no complete fulfillment in this world. So the first arrow is going to come. As long as we are alive, because of our past karma, the first arrow is going to come. But what we can deal with, with is the second arrow. Where is the maximum suffering? Almost all the suffering is caused by the second arrow. We know this. In life, we see people who have got maybe everything in life, very unhappy, who have hardly anything in life, bubbling with joy. 
it's not so much what happens to us in life. There was uh, one of the greatest scientific thinkers of our time, Stephen Hawking, absolutely paralyzed and confined to his wheelchair. Another scientist, so this is physically devastated, body is not functioning at all, but mind is brilliant. These are mental problems are worse, not necessarily. There was this uh, book and a movie, The Beautiful Mind, John Nash, the mathematician, deeply schizophrenic. Uh, he won the Nobel Prize. Of course, for most of the work he did beforehand, but even then he continued to be productive. He was still working in um, Princeton University. So even with the devastated man, and all of this is not original to me. I remember I attended a medical conference where a psychiatrist, he was giving a talk and he was saying that in spite of the worst hurdles, and he gave an example of Stephen Hawking and John Nash, one where the body is devastated, another where the mind is devastated, and they reach some of the heights of uh, human achievement. So it's possible. And the opposite is also possible. Everything is perfect. Perfect health, youth, money, um, fame, and everything is there. Just ruins its life. And there are examples like that. Maybe becomes uh, commit suicide or something like that. So the first arrow is coming to every one of us. And the second one is what we have to deal with. Um, in that same medical conference, a doctor was talking about pain. And he drew three concentric circles, small circle, middle circle, and bigger, wider circle. He said pain, actual, the, the suffering caused by pain, 20% of it is actually physical, actually what we feel, the inner circle, 20%, the acute pain which we feel. And then the middle circle is the distress caused by pain. It's going to hurt, it's going to hurt, expecting, even before it starts hurting, or worn down by continuous chronic pain. That is the, the middle circle. That's psychological. And then the outer circle is the social distress caused by it. I can't go to a function. I can't go to a party. I can't do this or that. I'm so disadvantaged by my pain. So he says, notice, 20% is actually physically felt. 80% of our suffering is mental, psychological. And he says, painkillers. He said, I'll let you into a dirty little secret of the pharmaceutical industry. Painkillers try and unsuccessfully at that, to address that 20% and they can never do anything about the, the other 80%. It's the second arrow, the second arrow which the Buddha talked about. So the real suffering is there and when we realize this nature that I am this pure consciousness beyond all suffering, where is suffering? At the level of the body, it's an object to me, it comes and goes, it's not me. Even when it is there, I can honestly say, yes, there is a pain, but it's not me. I can, I can see it like a, like a thing here. There was Swami Shivananda, one of the, um, uh, I mean, in our order, he was the um, second president of the Ramakrishna order, uh, a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. So in his old age, when he was the president, he had many problems, asthma and other problems in his body. So he's the head of the order. In some, uh, some monk came and one day asked him, um, they had heard that last night he had been unable to sleep, there was uneasiness in the body and pain and all. Next morning, one of the monks asked him, Swami, Maharaj, they say Maharaj, Maharaj, uh, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. But we heard that uh, you were so unwell and last night we heard, Oh, you mean the body, not fine at all, not fine at all, not well at all. <laughs> you see, <laughs> very naturally, I'm fine. Oh, the body, oh, it's no good. <laughs> I've seen many of these examples. So you can clearly see, it's not escapist. You're clearly aware of the problems in the body. And the doctors are doing their best and therapies are going on. But I'm also at a deep level, I know I'm all right. It's perfectly all right. It's the movie. It's a tragedy playing out on the screen. But the screen is not, in a, not uh, a feeling tragic. <laughs> so that is, Nivritte Sarva Dukkhanam. Cessation of all sufferings, when you realize, I am that pure consciousness. How does it work? If I know that I am the witness consciousness, how does it uh, help me to transcend pain? How does it cure the, the suffering?